Okay, my name is Evan Scheibel with CG Toots Plus, and in this tutorial, uh, we're going to take a quick look at a freeware program called Sculptress. Now, for those of you who don't have the resources or the financial advantage to be able to get your hands on a um, larger commercial app like ZBrush or Mudbox or something like that, this will be good for you, especially if you're looking to be able to export, you know, displacement maps, normal maps, or even mesh uh, sculptures. Now. This is really, it's for, for being free, this is a really robust application. Um, it doesn't have the, you know, the deep range of functionality as something like Mudbox, but it does offer, you know, someone who needs to do commercial, you know, um, commercial projects, it offers them a really, really good solution. It's really something that if you, if you're doing like game art, uh, next gen game art, things like that where you need to sculpt this is a really good thing to have especially um, if you can't if you need a small small application when it when it comes to file size as well as when it comes to price uh, you can you know download this in a matter of seconds stick it on a flash drive and have it wherever you wherever you need it okay so let's just I want to show you some basic functionality so let's just jump in and look at the few of the basic settings I'll go through the whole little menu you see there uh, all the basic settings that you need to just get up and running with this. Um, there's a lot of good free uh, videos and stuff on YouTube. If you just do a search for Sculptress, I'll have a download link as well as uh, you know the website and everything like that. Some more information in the description of the video. And I hope to just be able to maybe open a door for some of the you know younger up and coming artists to be able to really jump into 3D sculpting, and you know have have an avenue for them to get started. Even if they're working their way up to a to a commercial app, you know this is still a good good place to start. And even for the professional, this is a great solution and a great option. So we have a few a few things. You'll notice right off the bat that there is no file menu, edit menu, you know, window menu. There's nothing like that up here in the top. Rather, what what the designer has done is he's put everything that you'll need in these little buttons right here, which is really kind of cool, I think kind of convenient, a little more self-explanatory than having to fish through tons of menus. So uh, that's one cool thing. Uh, another thing I really like, there's a lot that I like about this software, but one of a few of the main things is this over and against ZBrush has a real perspective view. So you can come in here and, and rotate around and it's not going to have the, it's not going to be the kind of the orbital type view. It's, it's actually more of a turntable type uh, type viewport so that's really cool you can just view around here and you're not gonna have to worry about you know having your mouse over here you know to get it to turn a certain way it's, it's just gonna it's gonna pivot on a central uh, origin point which is nice and, and it's really good for a quicker workflow I think a few other things that you you want to know about this app right off the bat is something uh, that it has that's unique to this software called adaptive subdivision now if I go over here in this menu and I hit wireframe you're gonna see that there's something interesting about it uh, is that it's it's a uh, really dense mesh right here but if I come over here it's not as dense now that's really handy for really optimizing your mesh and really saving on system resources especially if you're just looking to uh, export displacement maps and normal maps and things like that um, because you're not gonna have to worry about the super high poly count of of a universal subdivision but you can still get the detail in your maps which is super handy um, another thing it's good if you're just exporting a mesh because it's gonna it's gonna save on poly counts and it's just gonna help you out a lot when it comes to if you're gonna go to another app and retopologize or if you're gonna optimize the mesh somewhere you know you're not gonna have as much work on your hands now this is just where I messed up I was just kinda doodling with this sphere but uh, this is you know I just messed that up there tried to make some nostrils but didn't turn out too well okay so uh, I'm gonna turn that back off uh, just have some graphics card issues running Camtasia and all this other software that I've got going here so uh, one other thing I want you to know and right off the bat is the different material and lighting presets that's essential when it work when it comes to working in 3d with sculpting because you're essentially sculpting with light uh, a different lighting setup with a different material is going to drastically uh, influence the way your model looks so you're gonna wanna go through and cycle through different material and lighting presets 
you know, pretty rapidly to be able to see all the different ways in which your model might be viewed so that you can optimize it for all those different scenarios. And this comes with 11 presets, which are pretty cool. I'll just kind of go through these as I narrate here. And uh, this one is, is kind of what you would see almost as the default material in something like ZBrush, a little darker in ZBrush, but that's pretty close. You can see a couple other ones here. This next one is one I use quite often. Uh, it just gives you a really interesting way to be able to view your mesh. Kind of, you can see all the little creases and the reflections and just how that's going to look in a lot of ways. You're, you can see that there. And here is another one. We'll just cycle through the rest of these here. This is a nice one as well. Oop, missed one. It all depends on what you're looking for, but there's 11 of them there that you can kind of cycle through just to get the feel for how your model is going to look in all those different scenarios. Now a couple other things is one, you can either just middle click to rotate or you can hold space bar. You can do that hold space bar and middle click to pan, hold space bar and right click. I think it's right click to pan that, pan like that. and. Uh, I use a tablet, so I'm not sure exactly which click that is. But if you just middle click, you can orbit around like that. Another good hotkey to know is the Alt key. If you hold down the Alt key, you're going to get something similar to what you get if you were to hold the spacebar in ZBrush. And you have a few options here. You can change the size of your brush. You can change the strength of your brush. You can see when I move these sliders up at the top there, that those sliders move as well. So there's just there's multiple ways that you can get to these different functions. Uh, you can also you can customize brushes and stuff. I'm not going to get into that in here in this tutorial. It's just kind of a simple, you know, get you started type video for this software. But you can customize brushes. You can do all sorts of stuff uh, just like any other software. And uh, another thing that's cool to know is like right here you can see what your brush is actually going to do, kind of how big it's going to be if you change the size. You can kind of get just a feel for how big that brush will be. Uh, you know, it's obviously a relative size there. But um, you can just kind of see what it's going to look like if it were flat rather than aligned to the mesh here. Okay, now another thing is the, uh, the buttons over here. You have all the basics just like you would have crease, rotate, scale, grab, flatten, uh, draw. And you can see they're all assigned to hotkeys as well which is good. You have two that you can kind of fill in with custom brushes or custom operations that you want to have there. Reduce detail. Mask, that's uh, real handy. You can, just like any other software, mask out things to protect from manipulation or isolate things in order to manipulate them. So, you know, you can, all different things you can do there. Again, the show wireframe. And then the symmetry, which is just like it is in any other application. You can see right here there's a seam. Now that doesn't show up anywhere but here, and that's just for convenience sake. And you can see if I if I begin to kind of sculpt there, you can kind of see that it, it it's just gives us some symmetry there. Just like it would be in any other software. And then the new sphere, if I click that, it's going to ask me if I... Uh, you know, it says changes will be lost. OK, hit OK. It's going to give you a new sphere to work with. Um, now, the cool thing is, if you, let's say, turn on wireframe here, and I can uh, do my grab here, where are we at? Crease, rotate, scale. And hit the grab here, and if I pull that out, you can see, after I pull it, how it kind of moves there. That's because it's it's subdividing the mesh. Kind of get the material error there. Let me change to a different one. And if I bring my wireframe in there, you can see it's kind of, it's subdividing that mesh and it's you know it's it giving you you can see how quick you can just get you can just do crazy manipulations on this sphere and you know obviously you have to come through and maybe uh, smooth that out things like that and then uh, over here bring your detail up a bit just gonna smooth that out nice you just do crazy manipulations on this on these on this mesh and not have to worry about your, your subdivision because it does it automatically for you which is I think really really handy and a really cool feature so you just pulled that right out of there two big old Mickey Mouse ears out of a sphere and you, I didn't get all kinds of crazy you know deformations like you would if you're working with a sphere in another application because it automatically does those subdivisions for you which is really really handy 
Again, it's got all the other stuff. You can work with a new plane. You know, the same kind of stuff. Uh, you know, just sculpt in there. You can see it automatically subdivides. Just uh, all the same kind of thing as with the sphere. Um, then you've got OBJ import and export. It works just the same as any other application. Uh, so not really too much you have to think about there. And then also the save and open. It saves in, I think, sculpture files, they're called. So you can you know save, continue your work later, things like that. There's a lot more functionality with this software. I'm going to leave that uh, you know to future videos. Uh, maybe others that want to take up and, and kind of do something with this, show what they've done. There's also a lot of good stuff on YouTube, a lot of demo videos from the creator himself uh, of the software. There's a lot of good stuff on the website, which I'll link to. Um, so. Again, my name is Evan Scheibel. I hope this was informative. I hope this kind of, you know, opens a door for you to be able to, even if you don't have the resources, to really get into 3D sculpting. And not with, a, you know, a mediocre half-wit software, but with something that's really going to serve your needs pretty well. Uh, so, I think it, it surpasses Blender's sculpt sculpting, or sculpting uh, module a little bit uh, because of the adaptive subdivision and stuff like that but working together with blender sculpting this one and just going back and forth like that you're gonna have everything you need when it comes to sculpting you won't ever have to go anywhere else um, okay again my name is Evan Scheibel for CG Toots Plus and I hope um, you know I hope this was helpful if, if you have any questions feel free to post them in the comments I'll I'll get to him if I can, uh, answer him as thoroughly as possible and to the best of my knowledge. So stay tuned for more videos, uh, more open source and freeware stuff as well, hopefully coming from me in the near future, and I will talk to you later. Thanks.